So they take out the puck. I mean, I, which could have I been said a, it at the start as a jokingly way. Is. Nice call on the wisp, by the way. But, you know, Hellraisers are one of those teams to run a core vengeful spirit. So they will do it. But well, they Dredd don't have takes Ortez. It okay. So Dredd's going to pick it up. Mm. So who's who's playing what here? This is this is interesting on both sides. A very different draft than uh, what we've what we've been used to here. And I'm also curious, regardless of which one is the core, how do they lane it? It looks like Gotham will take the AA. So does that mean okay. RMN is playing some kind of a core Rubik here? He does go boots first. Looking at starting items, it looks like Venge will be the one farming. She's got the circlet ring of protection already. So okay. yeah, they're gonna try even without Artez. All right, this will be fun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> game three, nonetheless. They're going to pull out something like this after what was yeah. game number two in the most tactical, ridiculous game I've ever seen. Now it's time to get a bit more brash and exciting here. All right, yeah. let's All right. do it, buddy. So game number three underway. I'll start off introductions here on your Hellraiser's radiant side. RMN, also known as Roman, he's going to be playing that Rubik, that fabulous new little set. Goddamn is going to be playing your ancient apparition. We got Dread, the personable streamer, popular persona. He's going to be your what looks like core vengeful spirit. Mid lane is going to be taken by Afo Ninja on your drow. And on the other side of the globe, we got Justin Noob, their newest stand-in. He's going to be playing your solo safe lane broodmother. Yep, um, proving to be an, a bit of an oxymoron of a name as he has been performing pretty damn well this series, I have to say. Dire side, we've got the four anchors plus the sea captain, Matumba Man. He's here on the Sven playing some Rogue Knight today. Nemphi, he'll be headed probably to the mid lane on this Wind Ranger. Boogie, he'll be supporting on the Wisp, the taxi service for Mr. Sven. Volux, he'll be on the Undying, and that leaves us with Trixie playing the Core Shaker once more. We saw this in game number one where he was stationed in the off lane. Still a little bit of uh, lane shuffling going about for the dire side, but Matumba Man is headed to the off lane with Nemphi going mid. So is this a, a Wisp Sven starting off in the bottom, perhaps? Wisp is actually headed back to pick up his bottle. I don't know why we're trying to question anything anymore in this game. I, it's just going to be ridiculous. These teams clearly doing as they please, but he gets the early bottle. He grabs a, looks, looks gem f or, uh, some wards for now, and he's going to take his business towards the bottom to help out this Sven, it looks like. And, okay. You know, so though, Sven alone is not going to do enough to stop a Broodmother. I mean, even already isn't Broodmother is getting way too much. Yeah, and it already is an aggro try from HR. So they'll try to kill two birds with one stone, slow down the brood, and also secure farm for the Sven. And in a two-on-three situation, if they can just break even in the top, that'll be great. And they have two heroes that are pretty good at doing that. Well, as I say, that Trixie walks out. He'll have one fissure to buy him some time. Is it going to be enough? And oh. certainly not. First blood comes out. Rubik draws it. Um, but uh, caster curse aside, I think once some levels come out, these two heroes are are pretty well suited to deal with an aggro try and not feed too much. It wasn't even so much that Trixie had walked out too far. Roman did a great job. He ate right through those trees right there and just simply walked up and got a good lift. And it even mm -hmm. caught Trixie off. He had to ping it thereafter. Like guys, I I didn't see that one coming. They were right there. So that's pretty much all Hellraisers need to give this lane a nice early boost. Orangers mm -hmm. is going to be playing early catch up here, but as far as mid lane matchup, look at this. Nephi is just being put into check. Already has to dish out the early salve at this point. Six and one for Afo Ninja to the four and one of Nephi. So that's two lanes already going very well for Hellraisers. You could say it's going great for Justin Noob on bottom. Gets level three on his brood. He's trucking on forward. Should get his soul ring in due time. This looks like yeah. a third game straight where Hellraisers are going to have a good laning phase. Yeah, seems like it. I'm very curious as to how well Matumba Man can actually farm in this lane. Brood will undoubtedly get some experience, some last hits here and there, but can they find some rotations to pick on Matumba Man? It seemed like the core of their strategy last go around was to keep him down, and it worked very well for HR to last as long as they did in that match in terms of the Ember Spirit being really a non-factor for the first 10, 15, 20 minutes until he started getting some farm to his name. This mid lane starting to level out a little bit. Uh, Afa Ninja going for a much different build than we've seen a lot of Drows do recently. When she's in that safe lane, we've seen some of that aura based. Uh, don't bother with the frost arrows. Just go heavy stats and try and give the team as much damage as possible. But here in the mid, you got to play a little bit more of a driver role and going for a, what I would consider a much more standard 1-1-4 opener, getting some extra points in that precision aura. But but still uh, utilizing everything that Dro offers in these early levels. So we'll see, Goddamn. He's actually going to be pulling the creep wave back and on over here, but they're still in full control at this point. You know, Dread matching up with his own Drow as far as CS goes. Uh, Matama Man, though, he's at the top of the charts. Yeah, he's Rude doing really well. doesn't want any part of this. Yeah, this is 
It's a bit funky. I guess just Noob just content on getting the extra bit of XP, just kind of dancing in, hoping he can get a yeah. occasional CS with his little broodling. So actually they commits could... with an early cleave on the build. Yeah, it's it's great for farming, great against the broodlings. I'm thinking that they could break down this aggro tri lane really at any point, especially now that they've got the creeps back their way and just rotate really any two of the three and try to pick a an, a surprising kill on the Sven. But finding the the proper opening to do that is is easier said than done. Matama man getting everything he wants here, 24 and 11. Next highest is 17 and 8. The draw ranger in the mid, so that gap is growing and rather quickly. So much so that the Wisp doesn't even have to stay bottom. He's been rotating mid, healing up Nymphy when need be to try and make sure the Drow doesn't just run away with it. Goddamn, just kind of keeping a watch. He's even sniping some of this pool camp here. Alex wants to commit on this. Oh, nice fissure. Tombstone's committed. Goddamn, might have gone too far on this one. It looks like he's going to be going down, and four anchors should be able to get themselves on the board, or will they? Roman, they're in front. It's going to be close. Lift, but Zombies. No, he's still going to get dropped, but they get Valix on the send back with help from Dread coming in from the left-hand side, plus that fade bolt. Trixie now has to run back and away, and they'll get the oh, gold potentially for the tombstone. No, they won't. It expires. That's nice. Okay. Two to nice one though for four razors. Very good. That's pretty good. Trading one for one when you're in a 2v3 aggro try scenario, the team with the two will take that trade pretty much all day. And especially in this kind of a scenario where it's an undying and an earthshaker, most importantly, they want experience. So they're they're happy if they can just kind of stay defensive and keep these heroes from rotating and putting pressure on their spin, on their wind ranger, who are really going to be the, the focus in terms of farm priority here. We'll the see mid still, lane. Uh, little quiet. Rotating Undying here. I don't see that very often, but he does step in, dish out the early decay. Nemphi thinks they got something going, but oh, he gets the oh. uphill connection. Oh, not there. Quick win run. He's going to get saved. Now they turn their attention towards Valigs, and he doesn't want to overextend for that one. He hits so damn hard. Factor in the aura, yes. factor in the chilling touch, and he's hitting like a truck. The level 6 is the big thing there, yeah. It's, there, there's a lot of heroes that ding level 6 and instantly get huge kill power. Lena, probably the, the best example of that. But Drow Ranger fits the bill also. She instantly goes from, I don't hit that hard, to holy crap, she does a lot of damage. And uh, oh. we saw it debuted right there. Down bottom, just a noob going to be in some trouble. They've got the detection, and Sven pops the god's strength and just chops him down. The tether helps him out. And now this brood in a world of hurt as Matumba Man gets that Reed's snowball rolling. Already power treads down. picked up, doing some good damage to this tower. Has a fair bit of time left on god's strength. This yep. off lane for 4ASC is now in great shape. Yeah, they played this perfectly. They held out, you know, didn't want to show off that they had the dust. And once he got his level six, they said it was the time to go. They went in, showed the dust, and got the kill onto the brood. And as you pointed out, really good damage on that tier one. Enough damage that it forces Dread now to show up on this bottom lane, who's a core farmer in himself. So maybe they're just going to start with her now. And then Justin Noob, yeah, he's going to look to set up off, take over the jungle, and Dread will just kind of work with this lane from here on out. Yep, opening up a, a little bit of extra efficiency here. I worry for Dread, though. I mean, one Storm hammer, hammer from the Sven if he has his ult up and he's overcharged. I don't see Avenge surviving through that. Even though Dread has picked up quite a bit of farm already, still not very tanky, just hanging out with that band of elven skin. Did put two points in stats, so that helps, but still not much compared to a god strength Sven going crazy. The one good thing here is that it's a little bit more efficient. If they can avoid death, then now they'll have somebody in the jungle that can clear out all that farm and start making some progress towards the Hand of Midas, where Justin Noob is beginning his quest for the recipe. Okay, jump in. Storm able to fly out. Dread might be in trouble. Pops the God Strike with a Fissure help. It might be enough, and it will be. Chops on down the Vengeful Spirit, but here comes a rotation from Apo Ninja, but doesn't have enough mana to work with. She does. She hits hard, but he hits harder. And now with that, has to step back. It's help from Roman. Now Roman came into a world of hurt. He's going to go down. The Spirit Ball going to be connecting from Boogie. Boogie going to get popped with the nuke damage from Bood. Who looks comes in from behind? It's Trixie trying to get the connection onto Apo Ninja. Still lives and manages Radiant to mingle Middle herself Tower away from trouble. Attack. Stunned Another, the fly. Ooh. He's still under the sentry here. They can get him. But he still wants to get the kill and does get it with the help of the Broodlings. They drop Matamba Man and it makes for a double kill on your Brood this game. Back even 4-4. Four to four. Dread back from the dead. It's welcome with a fissure. Tombstone going to be committed here. Justin New it's not done. might be in trouble. This fight is not over yet. They're going for Dread. As they move on forward, bit low on mana. They got the damage with the help of the Spirits and some right clicks. Dread dies two times back to back and four acres etched themselves ahead barely with one extra kill.
Yeah, it was that even change with Broodmother getting a double kill. Now a three for two overall. Brood making some huge progress towards that Midas. A man up with a good timing there as well. Trixie getting some of those kills though and getting involved is huge. He already has Arcane Boots on this Shaker, soon to be level seven, and he's making a lot of progress towards a blink. This game back and forth, but I think it's 4ASC that have a pretty good little lead for themselves. Only about a thousand gold on the net worth chart, but they are gaining momentum. They'll get their first tower kill in the bottom lane. And now this Brood has a little bit less of an access point there, and Dyer can start to move into that jungle a little bit and not fear the retaliation from HR with those TP access points. Yeah, They will go back to the aggro try, though, with the smoke. Yeah. Well, that's a good call. Matoma Man stuck up here by his lonesome. They saw the supports on bottom. They get Whoa. the swap back and the lift. Oh, Matoma Man's done for. He eats a fade yep. bolt, and he is going to get dropped. So nice, easy... Pick. Good execution from HR to recognize where everyone was on the map and he's get a quick assassination right there. So with this, and now the game begins to shift. You have a brood who's able to kind of make home wherever, which currently is going to be in that jungle. And you're going to have this drow who continues to farm on her own on the side. So where is the priority going to be for four anchors in their kind mm -hmm. of lineup? Because it seems pretty cut and dry for Hellraisers. I'm more curious for four anchors what they're going to yeah. be doing. Well, one byproduct of that skirmish down bottom was that the Drow rotated and the Wind Ranger didn't. So even though uh, Nemphi was sort of being bested there earlier on, he's caught up and actually surpassed the Drow in terms of farm. They'll TP up top to try and defend this tower. Glyph's already been used. Volux will get the deny. Now they go on to Goddamn, and they'll finish him off with that Tombstone as well as a oh. Storm Bolt for good measure. Nemphi and Boogie on their way up. Wind run forward. Nemphi looking for a Shackle. Won't latch, but Dreg could still be in some trouble here. Telekinesis comes out. Dreg goes charging back in. That's ambitious. Oh. It's a 4v2. It ends up being a freebie for 4ASC, and it could end up being yet another tower kill. Focus Fire already deployed. There is a Glyph, but HR limited on resources to make a rotation. Best they can do is pressure the bottom tier one, which Broodmother's already doing. Dread's a man. I got to meet him. He's a cool guy, but you're not that manly. He turned right around trying to take a fight, and that wasn't the time to do so. That means that Four Acres get two picks out of it. They denied their own tower, and they take a tower themselves, and they're not done yet. They charge on four. They get the Fissure and the Stormbolt. See you later, Roman. Followed up with an Echo Slam. Dread, he just got back. He might go down again. Swap back. Attempting to go to safety right here, but this is a relentless Four Acres group, and they are just sailing away with this early momentum swing. Now they might lose but Tumble Man, they will. Roman is already back. TP's in. Goddamn. Sees Trixie, who is just a bit overstretched. Maybe four anchors now might lose a whole lot. This game is just as ridiculous as the series has been all day. Uh, oh, yeah. uh -oh. That's a jump shot. Done for. Real oh. He's done for. Stolen Stormhammer. Going to be the cherry on top from Roman. So a two for four trade, but Rubik had to burn a buyback to make it happen as they were diving past that tier two tower here. Rubik buys back, TPs to the tower, helps secure some of those kills and force a few shatters. So even with a buyback, uh, suffice it to say, well worth it. And now it is HR that level out the gold chart and take some experience gain of their own. They did also get that tier one tower kill in the bottom lane. That whole time it was space created for just a noob to secure his minus, work towards another 2,000 gold, and just continue clearing out this jungle. Things coming together for the Hell Razors here, Dakota, I have to say. Now let's take a moment to breathe. After the mist of chaos, we'll have to see where they're going to use with this new bit of resources as far as item progression goes. Still at the top of the net worth, Drow and Brood, then finally keep the top of man. It looks like it's going to be a mech build up here on your Valigs. Undying, pretty common, going for the Greaves. Top of man, he's already got his Morbid Mask and Drubs. Heavy mobility there, probably going to go down the path of... I don't know, maybe a Relentless Mask of Madness Assault. We'll have to see, you got to remember, he doesn't get the extra move speed anymore from it. But, uh, what's this? We got action near the Roche Pit. Just kind of just a noob flirting with being around here. But there's a lot of four anchors nearby. Do they have detection? They do. They have dust on Trixie. If they see him, they will make a committed jump. Yeah, they've got wards all over the jungle here. And they're definitely going to continue putting pressure on the brew. Or the brood, rather. And... No, even just pushing that tier 2 in the bottom lane, having that vision to see if she breaks her web. It's pretty important. Looks like the other team will go on to Nemphi here. Swap, stun under the tower range. Easy ice blast. And from the backside, RMN again with that storm bolt will bring him down. Volux, he TPs in, but it'll just be to his death. Chilling touch brings him down. Easy peasy. Now, all the while in the other lane, they do punish that Drow Ranger who was trying to split push. Sven does secure a kill there, but it's a two for one around the map. And it seems that HR will put some pressure on this tier 1 tower. They force out the glyph straight 
straight away as Boogie attack. starts to rotate in. And Hellraisers walk out with a bit of a trade in their favor. I know they lose their drow, but they are still thinking about moving in here. Roman, pretty aggressive. He's not coming here to ward. He almost has enough for Blink Dagger. I mean, is it worth risking this? He thinks so. Jumps in, gets a Soul Storm Hammer. Hey, set up with an Ice Blaster support group. Doing a lot of work here, but okay. <laughs> okay. We'll see you later, Roman. He exactly what you were down. talking about. Pretty now, risky, just moving into enemy territory like that. Now he's got to wait that much longer for the Blink Dagger that he was actually so close to getting. He actually would have had it with this tower kill, but I mean, I guess but, he's still close. But uh oh, yeah. they're going to lose Goddamn as well. He gets chopped to the little icy bits. Four anchors walk away with another one. Yeah, uh, rather ambitious there from HR. If you could just trade the Rubik for the Tier 1 Tower Kill, I think you can make a case that it might be worth it. But as you pointed out, all that unreliable gold makes that sting just a little bit more. You think, well, there's a lot Rubik can do with a, with a Blink Dagger. Even just a minute earlier makes a difference. But still taking out towers. All three Tier 1s are down here for 4ASC, and there is still one standing for HR, this Tier 1 right here in the mid lane. The big problem for Hellraisers is this Sven. With a Wisp taxi service to have him move around the map, he's getting a lot of farm. He's now got drums as well as the Mask of Madness, and his damage output is scary. Well, pardon me. Is scary. Dust comes out onto I'm just a noob. But they can't find him. Matumba Man throws the stun on the Spiderlings. Oh, Justin Ubi walks into the other side. Nemphi's there. Relocate across. Volux as well. But the dust soon to expire. Power shot to the face. Squats the bug. The arachnid, rather. And Brood Mama heads back to the grave. It's really hard to put a place as far as where this game is going. It's on one hand, it was a good movement swing. You remember in that top lane for four anchors. Now it's back to Hellraisers and back once more to four anchors again. So just as topsy-turvy as this series has been overall, we look to see how the mid-game is going to be developing at this point now that your Mask of Madness is fully complete. Relocates are clearly out in full force. It looks mm -hmm. like the first rotation going to be coming out from four anchors towards this mid-lane. A very low tier one tower looks awfully delicious here. They would love to get yeah, the finish. Now, FNNJ did pick up that Helm of the Dominator. He's dominated a Wild Wing Ripper, and he's got a big old fatty stack here to deal with. Looks like at least a fourth stack for him as he clears them out. So there is some added efficiency for Hellraisers, but down bottom, initiation onto the Brood. They don't have enough damage for the kill. They force three TPs down to the bottom lane, and Rubik, he's going to wander his way down as well. Showing off that Blink Dagger, has a power shot. Uh oh clears out the trees, and they find RMN Shackle. Does not latch. Flesh Golem comes out, as does the Tombstone. Can he soul rip it? No. The silence just in time. No more Tombstone for this fight. Roman gets finished off by a power shot to the face, but Boogie in trouble. Dread will right click him down. Now Matumba Man low, finished off, but the dunk from Trixie makes this fight a slightly different trade, or or does it for ASC about to get cleaned up Trixie can't even kill god damn it's a one for five triple kill for dread as the farming venge a little scarier Dyer's than you might imagine on paper beautiful hold there from the hell raisers and with that bit of momentum they're gonna rush right towards the roche pit I, I saw it just a noob stop but they're going in <laughs> beeline in ahead <laughs> <laughs> Should be a quick and easy grab with this drow lineup. Do they have the medallion yet? Yep. Uh, yes, they do. They got it on Ancient Apparition. That's right, because this is a core vengeful spirit after all. So she's yeah. got Vlad's, and uh, he goes down. Very easy stuff. Hellraisers. This is starting to look good for HR, man, I have to yep. admit. They've got Ancients to farm now, and Aegis on the drow, and look at that gold craft. It was kind of even back and forth, and ju yep, there you go. That's a victorious team fight. They've got a nice 5k gold lead, 5k experience lead. They're balling. Well, we'll see, though. Every game, Hellraisers always seem to get that strong start. <laughs> Four anchors just seem to creep their way into some sort of comeback see, potential. Comeback. It's true. You, you make a very good point. This series, in general, has been super back and forth and topsy-turvy. I'd say the key difference this game, though, is HR are ahead early, and they also have a ton of pushing power. They take one fight that's in their favor. They win a fight like they did there. Getting objectives is easy. You can burn through Roche, burn through Tier 2 Towers. Game 2, that was their big problem. They'd take a good fight, and then now what do we do? We don't have a medallion. We can't kill Roche. We don't have the damage to flash push towers. This is a much different Hellraisers-type strategy, and a few more fights like that, and 4ASC are going to be in a lot of trouble. Right now, Sven is their saving grace. He's still number one on the net worth chart. Everyone else starting to feel the hurt from these failed skirmishes. And if he gets that BKB, that, that would help.
that would turn things right around oh, yeah, so he yeah. can kind of go in un, you know, in his unrelentless fury without having to worry about anything really stopping him. So they're putting a lot of focus and priority onto him finishing that out. And they smoke and go on the move. A relocate in store for us. Where are they going to head? It's going to be the cutoff dread here. And it looks like it will be a kill. Now, it takes a while oh. to finish. And Boogie's going to get popped from the ice blast. Nice oh jump. Oh, my. Coming and Dredd gets the kill before he dies. That's that's not that bad. Gonna Sven get gets the kill, but they're going to... Are they? RMN's right. on his way in. It's going to be close. Nope, the blink back. Now Matumba Man gets left behind. He'll go chop, chop, chop. Roman goes down, but it sets up for the rest of the team to get here. Just the noob on his way in. Frost Arrow's flying through. They get the kill on Matumba Man. A two for two. Uh, I would label that a victory for the Hellraisers. Yep. I mean, thankfully for four anchors, uh, Sven was able to buy the rest of his BKB before he went down. So he's got that finished and ready. But for every opportunity one team thinks they got the jump, the other team is right there ready to play, and it's been Hell Razors who have been one step ahead up to this point. Your yeah, Drow going for what looks like possibly her own BKB, unless she's planning on finishing a Sage and Yasha for now, just an Ogre Club. So we'll have to see, but she's working with a nice double stack. The, the farm continues to build up very nicely for them. I mean, while Sven is king of net worth, the next three all belong to Hell Razors. Yep. And speaking of BKBs, it's the Brood Mama that's got one out and completed. Now we'll have to head back to the base to pick it up, but BKBs coming to plenty. Feels like HR are itemizing pretty effectively here. Even got him. He's now been able to grab a Solar Crest. This is not a very common pickup on Ancient Apparition, but it's also not so common to see that position one Venge. So it makes a little more sense here. We'll have to forego a potential Aghanim's upgrade, but possibly even a sign that HR want to continue to stay aggressive uh, before the Aghanims would uh, would have come, down, come out. Big item, though. There is no Solar Crest on the Dire side, so no counteraction to it. Well, it's interesting the way Justin Noob has also been playing this brood. Now, we might have to hold that thought because they're already engaging. But by the secret shot that you can see, now Dredd could be caught in a bit of a pickle here. Matoma Man looking to flex out. Whoa! Big Echo Slam to fly in from Trixie. And look at that, Matoma Man. In all of his golden glory, has his full 10-second BKB. They wait for the second life of Ambo Ninja, and they just chop her to little sashimi bits. Suddenly, a three-man takedown, and all three go into the pocket of Matama Man. He's hoping and waiting uh -oh. for that BKB, and he makes good Relocate. use of it. Charge on in. They're going to get goddamn as well. Make it four. Oh, I thought that my. was going to be an ultra kill, but <laughs> it's what there from Nebfi. Yeah, what a series of events here for 4ASC. That was all the Sven's BKB. I don't think HR scouted it out. If he doesn't have the BKB there, that's a pretty straightforward gank, but he lives, survives with a lot of HP, turns it on, and he just goes to work. Of course, we can't forget about Trixie, though. That was an amazing Echo Slam on three. Set up that whole fight. And now 4ASC, just look how quickly they chew through these structures. That's two towers dead. Glyph will come out, but they are going to be able to finish it off, it looks like. A few TPs coming in, but still two dead. Now a swap on to Matumba Man. Do they really want to take this fight 4v5 even without the dunk? There's still a lot of right-click damage here. Just a noob goes in with his BKB. That'll be the 10-second debut. And no one dies. Before ASC will back out. Very ambitious play there from uh, HR. I feel like that actually could have backfired pretty tremendously. This is this is probably one of the craziest series I've ever casted. I'm just going to be frank with you. <laughs> I just no idea where this is going to go. You put a blindfold on and you just get shoved outside to the dark and you just hope that you find your way home. It's, I, yeah. it's just like crazy. One team you think is like, okay, this is them. They have a beautiful landing phase. They got great items. They got their Roche. They're ready to play. There's not going to be a whole lot that stops them. And then the other team gets a huge four-man drop. Three of those kills going Radiant's into their Sven, who now, wow. after already completing a BKB, grabs up a Blink Dagger. This is crazy. So now if you need someone to get in the oh, face of this what? drow, she can't safely hide behind her frontliners anymore. I don't know what to expect. Look at this. Relocate. Speaking of drow being safe, that's not the case now. They catch her out. He moves on forward, and she is dead. Trixie's going to get the yep. final blow there. Now four acres looking strong. 21 to 18 net worth back even once more. Oh, my. Yeah, we're we're dead even, as you mentioned. And the, the big outlier, though, is this Sven. You look at net worth, and he is just pulling further and further ahead. Rubik just barely gets out there. Trixie about ready to hit him with an aftershock, but can't quite get it.
still, they don't seem to have a response for this event. It will get easier as that BKB gets down to that five second charge, but that's still a ways off. He's still at nine seconds, so there's at least two or three more fights where this Sven will be a monster that they just have no answer for. They don't have anything to stop somebody through BKB. I guess you could swap him into an, an odd position, put him in the trees or something, but uh, that's a, a pretty uh, ambitious play to try and rely on. And now we see that cleave coming to work as Sven cuts through some ancient stacks of his own and continues to increase that farm. Man. He's, he's quite the beefcake at this point, and they're not looking to let up. They smoke right away, and they already migrate towards the mid lane. They got vision on Dread here. Early power shot. Can he get a good shackle here? He can't. Relocate. Now and relocate. And another kill. Man, oh, beautiful God. setup once more. Dread just a little too far from home trying to take that kind of farm. But hey, look at this mid lane. They might get a catch on to Trixie. A pullback. He still walks into Ice Blast here. He's just going to fight because he knows he's dead. Oh! It finishes with a big Echo Slam. Will get rewarded with the XP even after he goes oh, down. Oh, no! MJ goes in to help but is caught out with the relocate return. Matama Man on the chase here. Should be able to get jump, him. Catches jump. him. Gets the kill. Dominating now for Matama Man. High ground escape going to be coming out from goddamn. Back to base he goes. All the meanwhile, you do have Justin Noob doing his brood thing. This was the thing I was surprised about that I didn't get a finish a long time ago. It was normal brutes do this, split push, find their way on the side. Yep. But he had been kind of moving around, even being a part of the mid lane action. But now he seems to be kind of doing the split push thing. That does, of course, yeah. mean that Hellraisers mostly fight as a four-man group when really they'd love to have five. But this is the draft they have put themselves into. Yeah. Feels like things are starting to fall apart a little bit uh, for HR here. I mean, you, you look at this draft, an aggro tri-lane with Venge, Rubik, AA, you expect that to be scary. You expect it to get some kills and have a good time in lane, but 24 minutes in, this is when those heroes start to fall off a little bit relative to the carries, relative to someone like Sven, who now has a, a BKB and a Blink Dagger to go with his Mask of Madness. Dred's picked up a Blink as well as an Ogre Club, probably a BKB on the way there. Uh, the Blink on the Rubik and the Solar Crest on Ancient Apparition but I feel like the, they're all just on a ticking clock right now. The carry advantage will undoubtedly go to 4ASC, and it feels like it's on HR to really make some plays happen. And that means tightening up a little bit. This mid-game's been very sloppy with these pickoffs, and almost some of these pickoffs are playing as, as though there's no wisp. I mean, Dro pushing out even this far into the lane yeah. when there's no tower to come to, you're out pretty far. Nobody can save you if you get relocated on, as we saw earlier. Yeah, Dread farming that, that top part of the jungle there and just kind of nowhere yep. near his allies it's you're right it's as if they don't know there's a wisp on the other team we haven't seen wisp play in es portal a whole lot if at all but yeah not hello. really hello he's here so be ready for it <laughs> but here yeah. we go four acres coming back together once more keeping eyes on roche she is up and they would love to be able to take oh. it themselves but that's so on the brood easy. Great split pushing item there to take down these towers. But oh, mid lane after Ninja gets stunned up. Relocate in. BK beats Sven just chopping away. Drow Ranger in the grave again. Dread caught by a shackle that latches. And this is just an what? unstoppable streak. They cut through the AA just like that. You blink your eye and you miss it. It's a three for nil. And four ASC are going to start looking for towers. They know the brood is in here somewhere. But can they find her? God damn it. Yeah, they do. They cut down the trees and they cut down the spider. An ultra kill from a Tumba Man as the four anchors bust this game wide open. That was one of the the, the manliest things I've ever seen in my friggin' life. They just went right in there. He chopped in two chops. It felt like Drow went over, got the chops, took out the next turn, which was the Vengeful Spirit. Quick blink back. One chop to finish out the freaking AA, and then they still managed to catch out the Spider. It's, it's crazy. And with that, plenty of momentum to move into this pit and quickly chunk it down and get the ages. Four anchors. Mm -hmm. Very upset about how the last game went, it feels. They have been playing ruthless Dota in game number three. Uh, absolutely. Roche will fall uncontested. Uh, AA Ice Blast is scouted out and tickle the dire team just a bit. But the big boy will go down. No cheese, but uh, there will be an Aegis on the Sven. And he's got 2100 gold. There's something coming on that courier. What is it? It's a Crystalis and a Daedalus recipe. He also has his drums just chilling there on the courier. So he has a completed Daedalus now after selling the drums. This Sven, he's already doing an absurd amount of damage. Now, I mean, how does the Drow Ranger even think about living? I feel like she almost needs to buy something like a Ghost Scepter already. But, yeah. of course, if you're doing that, then you've got more problems. Yeah, exactly. 
Right, it's going to take two swings with the help of a crit to finish her off. Maybe Radiant even her own blink dagger fortified. just to ensure she's in somewhere safe. Because yeah. right now it's just not working out. And they get the tier 2 bottom lane. More farm even going their way. Just a new resorting to some sort of jungle farm, but even there doesn't seem to be safe. Trixie spots him out. They're going to get the catch of the fissure. And Wisp moves in. Oh. Unfortunately, the dust is on cooldown. Did he just pop it too early? He might have. It looks like he did. I think he, so, I think he oh, did. No, he, did yeah, just he did get it onto. It didn't look like it based on the graphic, but if you oh. actually click on just a new, yeah. he was caught with it previously. Yeah, there it is. Well, but well, here comes four acres. They're charging down the bottom lane. They're looking to ascend high ground already. 28 minutes. No in. glyph. They already used the glyph. Stormbolt comes in. RMN doesn't get the steal he's looking for here. Right now, hanging on to decay. And tower, tower will be taking down. some damage. With overcharge? Are you kidding me? He has Mask of Madness, doesn't want to use it quite yet. Yep. Remember, Sven is the Aegis carry here. Now Nemfi coming in. Just a noob walking forward. Silence on two from the Drow Ranger, but they've already lost their tower. Oh. Trixie again with that dunk on three, setting it up for the rest of his team to come in. They've lost the Rubik. They've lost the Venge. And now all four ASC have to do is reset a little bit. Nice stun set up on just a noob, but do they actually have the damage? Drow Ranger still alive, but a shackle connects on two heroes. That should secure the kill on the Arachnid. And now FNNJ stunned up, left behind, and put six feet under. It's all four anchors coming. Coming out here, Matumba Man is beyond godlike. Trixie probably gonna shatter here. It's gonna be close at least. This should be a lane of barracks at the very least to go to. Yeah, this is crazy. Ever since Matumba was able to string together a couple of kills and those easy picks, he was able to itemize. And ever since he got that BKB, it's been four anchors all the way. They utilized mm -hmm. it so well. They had that big fight breakout near their secret shop. They won that one. They got another couple of picks. They got that. Quick ultra kill right thereafter, and I think at this point they have. I mean, <laughs> privy they to pretty much the way the series it. is gone, and it could be topsy turvy. I don't think there's a comeback at this point. I think four acres have taken this game. No, I mean the draw ranger even has a buyback here. He's not going to use it, and it will probably cost him this next lane of barracks. Uh oh, swap back onto this fan. I was just going to say, remember he still has the ages, so four ASC Relocate can safe. afford to be a little bit aggressive here. He blinks back straight away. Does actually have the BKB if 4ASC want to turn and try to fight, but no, they'll play this safe. HR still have another shot. They could take one more team fight. One lane of barracks is recoverable. At least they burned the Aegis. That's a, a very small positive after looning a, losing a lane of barracks, but hey, it's something. I feel like they could have turned and fought HR if they wanted to, but maybe just based on how things have gone in the series so far, they don't want to risk handing anything over to to HR as it stands. So they walk away with their huge, huge winnings. Sven picks up now a Hyperstone. You see your medallion complete on your Undying. Man, credit to Trixie as well. He played a phenomenal Earthshaker in game number one. He takes it back in game number three, and he lands that huge Echo onto three, catching out all of the back staff. You know, your AA, your Drow, these heroes that kind of don't want to be too close to confrontation, but want to deal their damage from afar. Yeah, you're not going to be able to do that. Not with this team. Yep. Trixie has had a really good match so far. Like you were just talking about, a couple of key echoes just set up these fights so easily for the rest of his team, and he's also pretty survivable. He can hop in there in the back line, drop all of his damage, and then try and force staff Ghost Scepter back to safety. In that last fight, he lived. That's that's the other thing about it. You're diving to your fours. If you can get out of that, that's a sign you're doing pretty damn well. Relocate down bottom. They want Roman, and they will find him. One stun from Sven, a couple of right clicks, and the Grand Magus is... He's dead. Yeah. No, he no, just did. Say, Rip. <laughs> yep. Tell his family. Well, <laughs> as it stands right now, they'll just continue to dish out their their pressure here. Four anchors. No, they have a, a tier two to, to work with here at the top lane, which is kind of the safe route. They'll grab that one, and it's a matter of breaching into the high ground. And the high ground defense from HR is respectable, but not really good enough. Brood, bottom lane, oh, caught out. There's a big stun. Pops his own BKB. Trixie now the one on the run is dread to show up, but he does. Oh, side steps, caught between himself and Afu Ninja. This is all Galaxy's created for the top lane. He made it away. Oh, what? 
Eddie oh, TP's hell? out. That is so ridiculous. He's just made so much space for his team. They got a tier two and a tier three tower. The glyph hasn't even come back yet. And the Earthshaker is still alive. This should be another lane of barracks. Matumba Man getting focused. He's already used that Black King bar. Stun out on the dread. But Nempi showing off his 10 second BKB. Doing a lot of damage here. Roman will be the first to get brought down. Just the noob taking huge burst damage. Barely limps back to the well. But completely crippled. Meanwhile on the other side. Dread gets killed. Volux just zoning them out. Tanking the frost arrows. Tethered up to Boogie. They are repelled back to the well. The top lane of barracks have been cleared out. Now 4ASC just having some fun. Volux taking damage from the fire bush. It actually ends up costing him his life. They will back out with only one casualty. Trixie. Yeah, hey, he's just pushing the mid lane all the while. He's not even here. Matumba Man. Uh oh. Did he get left behind? Silence from the drow. There is a relocate, but now out of mana. They do finish off the Sven. The godlike streak goes to the drow ranger. 1500 gold there, and Boogie does end up getting put down also. So some recovery there for HR, but they did lose their second lane of barracks. Radiance and their, their only attack. remaining barracks are already exposed. I I don't see a hopeful right. frontier well, for them at this point. Nemphi even strings together another. <laughs> the, the kills just don't stop. Trixie I had two targets to choose from there, man. and I chose wrong. I was following Trixie, hoping for a big uh, Echo Slam kind of play. He didn't have it up yet. He will maybe get got him. It's Trixie versus the world, but now silenced by Drow Ranger. Oh, no, 4ASC. Hit him. There they're going to give him a, a sign oh, of life here. No! <laughs> oh, oh my. There's your so Echo Slam on the Ninja, but... Oh, okay. oh, gosh. That was... Well, I can't say completely disastrous. There's no Tier 3 towers remaining, just one lane of exposed barracks, but... Rather sloppy from 4ASC. That's a 7,000 gold gain for the Hellraisers there, Dakota. Trixie has higher net worth than Drow. I mean, it's obviously because they <laughs> take it so much already away. <laughs> These racks are worth even more now in this recent patch. I just don't know. I, this would take one hell of a, a miracle for Hellraisers to kind of keep this game in order. I mean, if yeah. four anchors want to, they could do more of their Trixie space creation with a relocate to finish off this rack. So be it. Because the pressure is always still in their base. You see bottom lane still creeping on forward. Yeah. This is yeah. looking like four anchors that they're going to be walking away with the series as a whole. But what an entertaining series it's been. In, they're keeping it interesting. That's uh, that's for damn sure. Just as you think, okay, HR might tap out at any point. 4ASC starts taking damage from the well. They're running all over the place. Even the Drow Ranger. I was thinking, okay, you've got two heroes here with a blink. Maybe they'll go the same way, get an easy kill, and then retreat. No. They blink in opposite directions. Wind Ranger dives the base, picks up a kill, then gets slammed right away. Trixie doesn't even get the kill that he's looking for. Rotates around, gets juked in the trees, then ends up falling anyway. So there are definitely ways that 4ASC could tighten up here, but with this kind of lead, seems like they're they're having a little bit of fun with their food before they eat it. Here we go, HR. Oh, look at this. They're going to smoke and actually head out from the base. If this doesn't go well, it's game, but if it Whoa. does go well, they might prolong this game a little bit further. Take a look at Dire Vision sure? here. We'll see what they see. It's not much. They poke into Dread. The blink board initiation onto Matumba Man. They hit him with a silence, but he BKBs. Oh. They lose Rubik straight away. Broodmother just evaporates under the power of the Sven. Now stun onto the Vengeful Spirit. They should have the damage. A swap. Not going to keep Dread alive. And, uh, well, you were talking about a disastrous team fight. It was exactly that. A four for nil. HR tap out as four ASC. Take this opening Siri, uh, series 2-1, but... Boy, was it a, a bloodbath and a hell of a back and forth best of three. Yeah, I mean, definitely something that people need to watch if they weren't here to see it live. One hell of a series. Credit to four anchors withstanding at the end, and especially Matumba, man, playing one of the most manly Svens I've ever seen in my goddamn life. 21, 6, and 10. It's ridiculous. Yeah. HR, three games straight, have a strong laning phase.